Earlier this year, I wrote my website, keeponcoding.io, which is a service that helps software engineers prepare for interviews. So how it works is you first pick a topic that you wanna work on, let's say arrays and strings. Then it gives you a set of questions here that are categorized by their difficulty, which is either easy, medium, or hard. Once you select a question, it gives you a prompt. It gives you an example with some constraints. And then on the right side here is your code editor, which allows you to first pick a language, write your solution, and either test it against a custom test case or submit it against a suite of tests. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about all the features that were implemented, what technologies were used, certain design decisions, how I hosted the website, how I'm able to run a user's code and test it, and any other problems I ran into along the way. So the first design decision was what to use for my backend. This year, I've been wanting to improve my JavaScript and Python, and I knew I was gonna do JavaScript on the front end, so I decided to go with a backend Python web framework. By far, the two most popular ones are Django and Flask. I heard that Flask is a lot more lightweight, so that's what I decided to go with. And if I could go back, I would have chosen Django. I learned that just because something is lightweight doesn't necessarily make it better. I actually ran into a lot of limitations with Flask, as I'll talk about later in the video. So the first thing that a user needs is the ability to log in and create an account. So when a user logs in, they have four options. I opted not to use a simple login where the user chooses a username and a password. I didn't wanna to have to deal with salting and hashing passwords and storing them in my database and having to verify someone's email and set up a password recovery system. So I opted just to use OAuth 2.0 for all my logging in. The first one I implemented was Google. And the first time I did this, I did have a little bit of trouble figuring it out took me probably about a week to implement everything correctly. But once I figured that out, the rest of them probably took me about a day each. In terms of the database, I'm using Redis and MySQL. Redis I use for two things. The first is to keep track of user sessions when they log in. So once they log in with a provider, I have an endpoint setup that the provider hits. And once their email is verified, all I do is query for the email address and then just add this one line session. I hash it with the user ID equal to user ID. And then Flask is able to key track of all these sessions. So on future requests, I just do session.get user ID. And if it gives me a valid user ID, then I know the user is logged in correctly. Otherwise, I just send a 401 unauthorized response to the front end. I also use Redis for rate limiting. So if a user tries to run their code too many times, I think it's three times in 10 seconds, they get this error, too many requests sent, please wait and try again. They have to wait for the cool off period and then they can run their code again. For my database, I'm using MySQL. I've used Oracle in the past and I strongly dislike it. I've also used SQL Server, but I'm doing all my development on a Mac now, so it doesn't really work well with that. And MySQL is one of the most popular databases in the world. I'm using MySQL Workbench as the client to access the database and pretty much all my tables for my website live in here so in here i'd have something like a question table which holds all my questions i have my child tables like the question difficulty and then i'll just have like a column in my question table that maps to that difficulty for accessing the database from flask i had a few options i could either write raw sql which is probably the worst way to do it i could have had stored procedures stored in my database and then just call the stored procedures. But in my opinion, the best way to do this is with an ORM. So you just follow their syntax to access the database. So that way, if you ever change your database down the line, you actually don't need to change any of your code. You just change pretty much one line in your code that points to a different database. And that's all you need to do. So that leads us to the front end. And I gotta use React, of course, right? The issue with Flask is if you set up a Flask project, it's very tightly coupled to its own front end. It uses an HTML template called Jinja, which basically looks like HTML mixed with Python. So I thought I could just take a React project and point it to the Flask backend, but no, I actually had to rewrite a majority of my Flask backend endpoints to make it a REST API. And then once I did that, I can just use something like Axios to make front end HTTP requests to my backend. I also decided to use TypeScript over JavaScript just because I prefer strongly typed languages. It is a little pain setting up all the types, but I think it pays off in the long run. In terms of styling, I I just use React Bootstrap. It's pretty easy to use. You just search for the component that you want, and then you pretty much just copy the code and put it in your React project. Now for the code editor, I was not going to implement my own editor with things like 
code completion and syntax highlighting and line numbers. So what I ended up using is a library called Code Mirror. The one I use is called React Code Mirror and it's very easy to use. You just import it into your project and it gives you like so much customizability, things like adding line numbers, having like a fold gutter here, things like uh, bracket matching or, or syntax highlighting. It has a bunch of different themes which I allow the user to change. So the user is able to change things like the font size, the theme, say they want a light theme, they can do that, or they can even change the tab size. I do also utilize local storage to save what the user has been coding. So say the user codes up a really big solution and then they wanted to test it, but I don't actually allow anyone to test code unless they're logged in. But if they log in and the page refreshes, they would lose all their code. So what I do is I store it in local storage and then say they want to test their code, like, uh oh, I'm not logged in. When they log in, you see that that code is still there. And this feature here is really just to have a good user experience. I also give users the ability to adjust their workspace. I'm using an NPM package called React Reflex, and it splits the page into three parts. So you have your prompt on the left side, you have your text editor on the top, and then you have your kind of results and, and tests tab at the bottom here. Okay, so let's talk about really the meat of this entire website, which is the ability for users to run their code. So what this really does is, and if we go to the developer tools, go to the network tab, say we write some code like return 100 and we hit submit. If we go to the network tab, we can see there was one request sent called submit code and it just sends the code, the language and the question number. That's all that gets sent from the front end. So the issue here is not really the issue, but it's always dangerous to run user code because they can pretty much put anything in here, right? And this code gets ran on my server. So potentially they could do something malicious, they could do something unintended, like have an infinite loop here, which would take up resources on the server. So in order to combat this, I use a technology called Docker. And what Docker does is it basically creates an environment or a sandbox for this code to run. And the user can do pretty much whatever they want in that sandbox and it doesn't affect the rest of the server. Even if they have something like an infinite loop, I can set a timer on it. I think it's either 10 seconds or 12 seconds. The Docker container will just stop running. Now, in order for people to use my website, it needs to be hosted somewhere. So I opted to use Linode's cloud service, which apparently they were acquired by this company called Akamai. But I have one Linode setup, which is essentially a virtual machine. On that virtual machine, I have the server engine X setup, and then I have my front end and back end code loaded up onto that. I'm also using their database service. So when I'm using MySQL Workbench, it's actually connected to this database here. So the virtual machine does have an IP address, but I need to connect it to a domain name. So I purchased the domain name keeponcoding.io, set up the appropriate records, and now keeponcoding.io is connected to the virtual machine's IP address. Finally, I give the users the ability to purchase a recurring premium subscription at a monthly or yearly rate. And just like I didn't want to store anyone passwords. I didn't want to store anyone's payment information, or I didn't want to even have to deal with payment processing. So when you click on one of these, you do have to be signed in. So once you click on one of these, it looks like you're still in my website, but this is actually hosted by Stripe. So I'm using Stripe for all my payment processing. And basically how this works is once you do subscribe, I have a webhook set up in my code that I receive from Stripe that says, Hey, this person's payment was successfully processed. Give them premium access. I do have courses. Again, this seems like it's hosted for my website, but I use another website called Podia that allows you to purchase one of these two courses. So once you do check out, again, this isn't my checkout page. This is all hosted on a third party website. And that's pretty much the entire website. If you want, I can go into more details about certain features. Obviously in the code execution, that can get pretty complex. So I could make a dedicated video for that. So let me know in the comments if you found this video interesting. Like the video, please subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep on coding.